Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay. This was something I probably shouldn't have... Well, I'm not going to say that. I won't say shouldn't share. But it's some information that I learned back in the day, and I may have utilized some of this in the distant past. Okay. I learned this from a couple of moonshiners. Um, and this individual, who shall remain nameless, had fought in World War II, fought in Korea, and fought in Vietnam. And he was the first one ever showed me this little modification to an M65 field jacket. And the reason he did it was pickpockets and things like that. He said going on Liberty or going on uh, r and &R and etc that these guys, these pickpockets, were professionals. They were good. He said you could put your stuff in your pockets, you could put whatever, you could rig it up, and they just seemed to be able to magically get it away from you. And so whenever I was doing courier work back in the 80s where I worked for a government contractor, and most of my job was actually just uh, driving a truck and assembling radar, but from time to time I was called upon to be a bonded courier. And it's where you'd be carrying often things like a piece of paperwork or a check or something like that from A to B, where it was not what you'd call heavily classified, but just sensitive. And so I had to transport things. And so one of the ways that I transported it was to look just as nothing as I could, be gray. And so just being an old redneck wearing cowboy boots, kind of worn out blue jeans, a t-shirt, and a 65 field jacket. I walked through a lot of airports and stuff like that. Never got looked at twice. But at the same time, I could carry things, okay? Now, what I'm about to show you is something very thin, okay? And what that is was a way to carry for the GIs that were teaching me how to do this. It was how to carry their money, their folded flat bill money, and make it where it was just about impossible for the pickpockets to get it. At the same time, a cursory search would not usually detect this. And it, this stuff had come out of the early special forces of World War II, a way to get stuff in and out of Germany and other clothing. But it kind of tied over to this. So, let me put the camera down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Here's a standard M65 field jacket. And here's the standard pocket, okay? And you have the flap that comes over and snaps, and you have the big old pocket. How you would do this to keep the bad guys from reaching in and grabbing whatever is this, you would lift up and turn this around like this. Now that's the inside of the pocket, see? That is the pocket right there but you would turn it this way. This is the side that's gonna face you, and then here's the liner that is actually against your body. It's in this section. You would take something like a handkerchief, and you would lay it up here, and you would trace out the shape of the pocket, going around and just re-sewing. All the way around until you had another pocket so to speak, like this on the inside. The only way to access this pocket, because you'd sew it up to there and sew it up to there, was to take the jacket off, do like this, and lift up and go into the pocket. But you could put your folded money or whatever in here, and then when you were wearing the jacket and the bad guy ran his hand in the pocket, there wasn't nothing he could get. And he couldn't run his hand underneath it and get it either, because of the way it was put up against you. He'd have to go between the liners. There's no way he'd do that without getting your attention. Now while we're up under between the liner of the jacket and the exterior, if you notice you've got your pull cord right here, okay? On the inside, right here is where that pull cord comes out. And this is that internal pocket 
that that cord runs through right here in this front edge of it what these guys would do is they would take and sew another little pocket right there and put a button compass inside of that for evasion and escape a button compass or a handcuff key slid inside and then sewed through this to hold it in place so you could get this out and access it they would also run thin wire to make a garrote through this as well so from a cursory examination if captured they'd run their hand in your pocket and not find anything they'd feel all over the pockets and wouldn't find anything and then they're going to take you back to the rear to actually do detail work but in the field that's what they'd done but you would have in there a compass you would have a, a handcuff key or something like that out of sight and that right there because of that knot right there would cover up any feeling they think it's the knot see another place is here up in the collar you've got the zipper to get to the hood but a lot of people don't realize that you go in and go here right here is a pocket my finger goes into it and if you put a button compass a something up into here and then just put one or two stitches bump bump right there it would be in that pocket and it would be hidden by this tape any bulkiness you would think it was the tape doing it and would hide it so right there again they'd open up and they'd feel around and they'd feel that tape and it would camouflage anything small you had folded up put in there like tightly folded up money like tightly folded up map a very small piece of a map and a button compass something like that could be carried up in here or survival gear could be carried up in there hidden out of sight so if you were just a regular everyday soldier and they checked you there wouldn't be a whole lot they could figure out see things like that made a difference now one of the old moonshiner tricks for doing and having that pocket down there was they had a little silk handkerchief and the silk handkerchief you could write on it with a pencil a lead pencil and when you washed it it disappeared right well them moonshiners they're going around town taking orders for their upcoming uh, shipments and so you didn't want to have anything written down on you because people would figure out what that was so what they would do is they would go like four or five shops Joe wants three jugs Tim wants two gallons Tim wants this Billy wants that until you got it in your head like you wanted then you went to a bathroom and when you went in the bathroom you pull that out of that secret pocket took your pencil and you wrote it down you folded it and have and stuck it back in the secret pocket and come walking out that's what the moonshiners were doing it with that's how they kept their tally of who paid and who hadn't and how much money and etc and when they got home they could lay it out detail it out of what they had to do wash that handkerchief and it was all gone quick and easy huh the guys that did a lot of stuff in the OSS in World War II were masters that had to hide stuff in clothing, have buttons and things like that. And if you ever get to see some of the documentaries of the stuff they were smuggling into POW camps in World War II, it was truly amazing to look at. But what I did was I would have, let's say, a check that I would fold up. And remember those little flat pieces of cellophane that baseball cards came in those individual baseball cards i would fold it up and slide it into that and then put it in my secret pocket that i had i've removed it from this jacket over the years mine originally was just a handkerchief sewed in and it eventually gave up the ghost and i just took it off but i was able to walk you know around just being a redneck and if somebody mugged me they wouldn't get the important check that i'm delivering it was a way for me to have it on me and get from A to B and just in case things went bad you know they're gonna want my wallet of course but when they frisk me down I ain't got nothing and I got a old wore out jacket and a ratty pair of blue jeans and everything else and they ain't gonna pay me no attention even if they bothered me to begin with and so this way I could transport information that went out of day you got much more modern ways of doing such things it's just some old school stuff but still, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a little survival gear with you. I've talked about 
how you put stuff in your pockets and etc. And I've even talked about how this epaulette can be turned into a little pouch to put stuff up into it for a little survival set. So there's always a way if you look at it. All you got to do is think about the problem, and think about what you'd like to have in that problem, and then figure out how to carry it. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you happen before you go. And until next time, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.